I think that's really important to start getting on more sales calls with people who are 90% pre-sold rather than spending your time trying to convince people to work with you. Welcome to The Marketing Report. My name is Russell Pearson and this is episode number 89. The Marketing Report is a podcast for passionate yet frustrated business owners who are looking for a competitive edge. And today's competitive edge is going to not come just from me as it did last week. We've got a fantastic guest on the show today. And today's guest started in online marketing with multiple five-figure e-commerce stores. He transitions from there to become the owner of the Digital Difference Makers, uh, which is a marketing consultancy and agency focused on helping purpose-driven business. Please make him feel absolutely welcome, Job Neal. Thanks very much for having me on, Russell. Pleasure to be here. Fantastic to have you on. And the topic that we're talking about today is a, a very cool one because it's, it's something that not every business owner is doing, even the ones that are in the e-commerce space. And uh, it's really about that sort of, I'm going to call it a no man's land between engaging a prospect and then either having the conversation or the same thing I'm sure can happen where you have a purchase and in between delivery. So it's that space in between. What do you call that space? Well, for the service-based businesses, I call it like that, that pre-call simply, that pre-call funnel in yep. a way. Um, you could call lots of things in terms of really just nurturing your audience in a yeah, way. Yeah. And that sort of applies over e-commerce or service-based businesses. Yeah, most people think about the nurturing process as being before the inquiry is made in the sales piece. Like, all right, well, I've got a lead through a lead magnet or something like that. And um, they don't know me. I don't know them. No like trust, et cetera, et cetera. And then they make contact. You're like, all right, great. They've made contact. I'll see you in two weeks. Yeah, exactly. It's really like, oh, great. They opted into my email list or they joined my Facebook group or they've booked in a call. Job done. Like, there's, <laughs> there's a fair bit of other work to do. Like, you know, email, once you've got the email, how are you then leading them somewhere else or to book a call? And then we start the book of call nurturing as well. So yeah, and, I, and I, like, I like the idea of that too, because that's the piece that a lot of people don't have. It's like the, there's a call's been booked. That is not the end of the job. Um, I know that in, uh, you know, with a lot of clients I work with that do a lot of events, someone books in for an event, like the, the event's sort of like, you know, just a sort of a bonus that they're going to be able to come to an event, but it's a reason to talk. It's a reason to have a conversation before they even come to the event. Uh, and it sounds like this is very much the same. Yeah, it is. I mean, like there, there's a few people that have done some great work where they run an event and then people apply to come. And even before the event, they can book in a call and really it's just, yeah, the event will still happen mm -hmm. and it's something to fall back on. But now they get to fast track that. And in the same way, when someone books in a call with you, a lot of people just wait till they get on the sales call to actually deliver all of the information. They wait till they're up to the stage of pitching someone that they say, well, here's, here are my testimonials and here's what the offer is. And here's all the reasons you should work with me. And they're mm -hmm. trying to condense all of their time persuading someone into this like quick 10 minute piece. And just yeah. as we were talking earlier about um, persuasion, before the call, you can actually send people a lot of this information. And a lot of the times, a lot of the things I've been really interested in something just before a sales call, someone's yeah. led with all the information I need around their offer. And it was set, it was told in a really compelling way. And in the set, at the same time, I saw all the social proof that I needed as well. I think that's really important to start getting on more sales calls where people are 90% pre-sold rather than spending your time trying to convince people to work with you. Yeah, yeah. Now, you said persuasion, and then we did mention that before. So, uh, Dr. Cialdini, uh, I can never get his name quite Cialdini? right. Cialdini? Cialdini, that's better. Um, was, uh, now, he, his first book, what was that called? 
Uh, the first book was Influence. Yeah. Now, Influence um, talked about the, the steps of, of influencing someone. Um, you know, talked about things like reciprocity and scarcity and all those different elements that many of us know about and a lot of, a lot of people try and fake. Uh, but then he had another book that came out called Persuasion that actually talked about, all right, you, do you realise that you can actually start the persuasion stuff before you actually have a conversation? Yeah. And yeah. so um, can, can you give us the sort of basis for that? What are we trying to do during that period? Yeah, what, what are you trying to do in that period? Like rep, keeping in reference with like someone that's just booked in a call and before they actually get on the call, it's, I find it the way to get over the five main objections that you're probably going to get on a call. Like well, let's talk, one talk of to those, that too, because oh, I love the detail of this. Like one, the first one's information. And that's you know, really, I don't have enough. Yeah. I don't have enough information. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't really understand what your offer is about because most of our offers are, tucked into this five, 10 minute pitch at the very end. Ideally you're trying to do five because you don't want to be speaking for 10 minutes. And then mm. someone's like, I don't even really understand this. So the first one's information. What can you send someone before the call that gives them a good overview of what problems you actually solve in the offer and how you do that? Yeah. So that when they get to the stage of the offer, they pretty much already understand it. You probably still cover it again but they're pretty clear on it already. Yeah. The other objection is trust. If someone gets to the end of your pitch or throughout the sales call, I don't, I don't trust, trust you. You, <laughs> you are not overcoming that in five minutes because trying to persuade someone to trust you makes just pushes people away. Yeah. You know, here's all the reasons you should trust me. Or why, why don't you trust me? And usually they'll use some sort of objection like, oh, just not, I don't think it's for me right now or, you know, send me a website and I'll go check it out later. But really it might come down to the fact that I think this is what I need, but you're not the person to do it for me. And yeah. what could have fixed that beforehand would have been seeing testimonials would have been like, could I hear more about you and why you do what you do? Mm -hmm. And all of that could have been sent in a video beforehand. Or, on, or seen on a page before the call. So those two ones are, are really important to try and overcome before someone gets on a call because they're very hard to overcome Yeah, on the call. The other two are money and time. Yeah, which are the, 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 the big ones most the people throw ones. up at the start, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and money and time will present in different ways for different offers. Mm-hmm how can you present your offer in a way that, you know, maybe it saves, maybe it saves money. Maybe it stops losing money. Maybe it helps you make money. That's a very easy way to be able to justify it. My fun, and, my funnest thing to do in that start, that space is go, all right, fantastic. Now, if we let's take money out of it for a second, let's say if it was, I don't know, a third of the price, are we going ahead? And they go, Oh, well, actually, I don't know. I've got the time. And then you start to get closer to what the real objection is. I, I'm, I'm exactly the same. I, yeah. I love that way of doing it. It's yeah. yeah. Outside of, outside of money. Do you think this is a thing that can solve X problem? Yeah. Uh, soon. Yeah. Great. Something else. Um, I was on a call today actually. And uh, the, um, uh, the awesome individual, hopefully they're listening um, was very much, in a state of, oh, yeah, I'll just send us some stuff and I'll, 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 I'll send you a proposal. And they're like, but, okay. And I said, if I just send you a proposal on both of the things we're talking about, it's just going to confuse you. So let's, let's, before we even get to that, like number one, do you want help with this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I want help. All right, number two, do you want my help with this? <laughs> and so even just getting down to those basics because you don't want to be then like in the old adage, like, oh, you'll win one out of three quotes. That's because they've got three quotes. Don't let them have yeah. three quotes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just going to confuse them. Yeah. No, that's a great way of putting it. And I think even like some people that are, they hear that, they think that's a great result and they jump to great. Yeah. I'll send you an email. Like I'll just, I'll send over all the info and they don't know 
what their person actually wants to see. They don't know. They haven't even talked about the person's budget or no. like, you know, if you're a freelancer and you don't ask, like, like, look, just so you know, it's probably going to be close to $10,000. Is that within your budget? So, yeah. No, 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 that's way off. Great. I'm not in the business of writing proposals. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, and then the funny one too, especially with people, I hear this all the time and it, and it kills me, especially in this space. I'm going to actually, I'm going to give you two things. Number one, people saying, oh, well, I work in corporate, so it's different. Okay. Uh, which is nonsense. But they put that to the side. Uh, it's that, oh, they, they keep telling me in these, these corporate spaces that they don't have a budget. What's interesting about that is if they don't spend their budget, they won't get their budget next year. <laughs> so yeah. they have a budget and they have a budget to spend. They just don't know if they want to spend the budget with you. Yeah. 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 Because so I love they've, the sales side of things. And Absolutely. they've just taken it, right? Yeah. So you've got to, you've got to know what you're doing. Now, uh, anyone who's listened to this podcast you know, more than a couple of times knows that one of my big uh, things is don't send lonely proposals. You know, whenever you can, you're there with the proposal because otherwise it's a binary yes or a no. They're, they're reading something that's written down and they're going, well, I don't like this piece. Therefore, it you know defaults to no on this proposal. But if they're there and you're walking them through it and they go, well, I'm not sure about this piece. And you go, oh, we can change it right now. Like, watch, I'm literally changing the copy. Watch out, let's see how that works. And, yeah, yeah. Um, so and they go, oh, okay, well, that's much better. Is that booking in a call, like saying, hey, look, I'll write some up. How about we book in a call? And I'll walk it, you through it tomorrow. Yeah, I'll yeah, I like it. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a much more useful thing. Now, again, that's on the that's on the 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 other side of things. Um, but I I really want to let, let's go back to the the beforehand because it it is so important, and it's something I even probably uh, do. Actually, I don't do enough of it. I, I know for sure I don't do enough of it. Um, and I've been speaking to some of my clients in the forge about this point in particular. How do your clients like to buy? How, what's the experience they want to go through? You know, if you're going to sell a, a carton of milk, you know, you, you don't want um, to have them go and hop on a, 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 a priority call or a triage call and then like go into a strategy call. They don't want to be in a strategy call to buy a, a thing of milk, right? So the, the question is, well, how do they want to buy? And then, I, and then if I ask myself with my own space, like how do I like to buy expertise? Well, usually I do all this research and look at all the pieces and then I come in pre-sold and I tell the salesperson I'm a lay down. So they don't, even, they don't even bother. Just tell me what the next steps are. Yeah. And that's because yeah. they've done a really effective job in the pre, uh, the pre-suasion pieces. 100%. And like I, I, I've said this to a few people. I am, the programs that I am in and have been in, they've been like, it was so easy to sell you. And I was like, we well, didn't have, you didn't have to sell me. Like I was, I was sold before I got on the call. Honestly, you could have, you would have had to do something pretty bad on the call to put me off. Yeah. And that has happened before, but very, very rarely. It's pretty, it's pretty hard to butcher it when someone's sold. The other side of it, like if someone gets me onto a call and I haven't been sent anything, I haven't consumed their content and I'm more so if I am in that information gathering stage, hundred percent, I'm not buying. Like I'm very, very difficult to, to sell. And I think that's the same for a lot of people. I think that some people learn a lot of sales tactics because they want to like, I want to be able to handle everything. Yeah. I just don't think you can really handle information effectively and maintain a good relationship with people. Cause if you try to convince every person on a call it's hard to get them to book in another call if you don't close it. Yeah. Yeah. You burn the client. Yeah. You burn the, you burn the prospect. And the, um, uh, one of the, like, so years ago, I was working with Frank Kern. And <clears throat> if anyone does know, he's an internet marketer. He's been around a long time. And uh, he introduced me to this sort of um, sales process that just didn't burn the, the clients. It was, it was very much a case of, you take them through the the the, the process. You, you're talking about their problems. You're you, you're like, oh, it sounds like these are the three steps that we go through. And it's like, what would you like to do? And then they go, well, um, what what are my options? Oh, we could do this and we could do that. And if you do this the way, you could probably do it like this. 
but you know, what would you like to do? And it's like, oh, oh, how much is it? Oh, it's not going to be ten thousand dollars or anything crazy like that. It's five thousand dollars for the program. Um, and so, and and you know, if we put it put that deposit down now, we could probably get started next week, and we could be onboarding you. What would you like to do? And nowhere in there is there pressure. Yeah. Nowhere in there are we burning the client. It's completely on their option. If they go, look, I'm not up for it right now. Um, cool. Absolutely. Just so I understand what is, you know, and then you go through a couple of the objection stuff, but if it's not now, that's fine. And then I see a lot of the other good people uh, who are teaching sales, whether it be Taki Moore or a whole bunch of others, that they, they lean into that principle that sometimes it's not the right time, that there should be a priority to do something. People are ready to act, ready to, uh, to do what they're going to do. Because uh, in my world, in the, um, well, there's a little bit of change management in my world, but in the, um, uh, the strategic side of things, if you give someone a strategy when they're not ready, they don't act on it and it goes to waste. If you, don't, if you teach someone how to do things when they're not ready, they don't implement it and therefore they don't actually um, uh, absorb the learning. Yeah. Right? And so I love everything that you're saying about the steps. What are some examples of the steps though? What are some examples of things that we, so let's say, um, and, and this can work for a product as well. Like after they buy, you know, we want them to make feel good before the delivery. There's things we can do, but we'll put that to the side for a second. We'll talk service. They're going to have a conversation with us. They've scheduled a call. What, what are some examples of things that we can either send to them or things that we can do in that space? Yeah. So there's the, the simple way of doing it is like, you, cause you can automate this completely within Calendly. Like, you know, they've booked in a call, they're already getting reminders. Now you just slip it into the reminder email and the reminder text, hey, before our call, just check out this page. So you set it up on, whether it's page on your website that is hidden so it's not everyone seeing it or whether no, I didn't. I funnel. didn't know that you could do that in Calendly. So I'm gonna go and affect that like this week. Yeah, workflows. Yeah, great. Workflows. Yeah, re- <coughs> great way to reduce no-shows as well. Fantastic. Um, yeah, that, that really, really good. Um, and I think an extra 30 bucks a year mm-hmm. on Calendly. So it's worth it. Completely worth it because it takes out, automates all of your reminders. But then, yeah, you slip in this page link and you slip in like, hey, just go check out um, this page before our call. It'll give you more context for what we're going to cover on the call. Then on that page, the first video I've got is really like, you know, thank you, firstly, booking a call. I'm excited to speak to you. Like, or thank you for booking with me or my team. I want to talk, I want to give you a bit more information about who I am and why you should trust me so that we're not having to talk about that on the call because I want to make sure we're maximizing your time. And I'd simply do that in that first video. Right. I give them a bit of an idea of like who I am what I've done before so that they can see like, okay, you're not new to this. I mm-hmm. can see, you know, you know I, I might talk about how many clients I've worked with. I could talk about different achievements I've had. Um, and, you know, even pre- I don't say that stuff to brag. I say that stuff so that, you know, that I'm not, you know, just playing around having fun. Yeah, yeah, and and, 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 and try and avoid the old classic line. I think it was a Brad Sugar's one. You know, I don't say that to impress you. I say that to impress upon you. Uh, the importance of A, B, and C, right? <laughs> it's an old one. I haven't heard that one, but that's a good way of doing it too. <laughs> um, the next video is positioned as a value video. Mm-hmm. And really in this video, my main aim is to try and Well, actually, so before that one, and you could either do this as a separate video or you could put this into the video. Some people don't do this. I prefer to do it because I want to lead with my offer. I want people to have all the information around my offer. I'm happy to tell people (coughs) the price that my offer is. And I break down all of the problems that I'm solving. It's pretty much my pitch. But I get now, to make actually, sure I'll stop the you there for a second because this is um, there's a lot of conversation about this. Yeah, why do you do that up front before you even had a chance to speak to them? Because I want them. Because the people that I'm getting on calls with, 
and the way that we do get on calls with people, they're not typically very cold. They have consumed a fair bit of our content and we've had mm -hmm. a conversation where I've qualified them to the point where to the point where I am fairly certain of where they're at anyway. So that when yeah. I am talking about my offer, I've talking about it in a way that is in line with how they've actually got on the call. So a majority of the time I know what specific problems that they're going through and they get and they they're watching that video and ideally they're going, that's something I'm going through. That's something I'd be interested in. That's something I'm going through. They feel understood that when I get to the price, maybe it'll sting a little bit, but in the worst case scenario, at least when someone does get on a call with me and they might, I go, were you able to check out the video before I call? Yep. Yeah, I really liked it. To be honest, like I, I love the offer. Um, and I just want to say straight up, I have invested into another business coach and I'm not sure if I'd be able to afford that right now. And we can start to like, I, I know where that conversation is going to go. Yeah. From the beginning. Now, what's like, interesting if, about this, what's, what, what I'm hearing in this, I don't know if you realize what you're saying, but what I hear in this is the e-commerce. I can hear the e-commerce in this. Yeah. And so, um, uh, cause, uh, and, and there's two parts to this, to this piece. So one of the things I teach is, um, don't, don't walk into the meeting with a square peg. Like you'll walk in and go, here's my offer. And then you're going to jam it in whatever round hole they've got, which we know is painful. All right. So, uh, the, the, the point is to understand their problem and then match the, the, whatever you've got just to that, if it makes sense. Yeah. Right. But what I love about what you're doing is you are, are preparing them for a sale, which is a big step in itself. But I'm even taking it one step further and going, all right, even if we brought the two worlds together and we're going to tailor and design a program for someone, at the least at the very start, you can say, this is what I do. I put programs together for people that do A, B and C. The ways I work are in these two separate ways. You know, uh, so if, if you are thinking of working with me, then these are probably the ways that it's going to go. Anyway, I'm looking forward to the call. You know, let's let's dig into you know what your challenges are and how we can get you your outcomes. So the it don't doesn't have to be the um, the Russell Brunson value stack, but it no. can be very much around positioning. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I I always think that you've got to look at what your exact offer is and the journey that your client is going to go through before the prospect is going to go through before they actually. Like we I said, always think of them as meet clients. them where they're at. They're, cli they're clients, whether they're on our books or not. They're clients. They just haven't decided uh, yet. <laughs> yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, so, so that's like, great. So that so you've gone. All right, you've gone. Uh, this is who I am. Uh, welcome to the thing. Looking forward to it. This is what I do, and ideally, this is my prime offer. Yeah. Uh, you then talk about um, uh, beliefs. Now, this does feel a bit Russell Brunson. So there's a belief one, two, and three. The the you know internal, external, vehicle based beliefs. Yeah, yeah, I think um, so. There, there's there, there's a lot of different ways you can do like the next video, right? Yeah. You can look at, and this one is positioned as value mm -hmm. because it is. If you're identify, if you're helping someone identify stuff and shifting belief around something, perfect. Yeah, I I probably look at this from like again around the objection side of like, all right how can I pre-handle like the, the easy one to handle? And you can do this in the first intro video where you're saying like, you know, Hey, just to be more prepared for our call. If you think that you need your partner on this call to make a decision about, you know, investing into yourself or investing into your business, yep. then I'd have you show them, the video below or bring them along to call if you think they need to be a part of that. Yeah. So you can handle that one in the first one. That was the, that's like the fifth objection. That's if someone has on a call, it can be overcome, but it might be that closing tactic to close rather than, and potentially you, like we were saying, you could break rapport and the person 
burns. Yeah, out. and you need to go into this sort of like really heavy-handed thing to sort of break that pact. Um, and um, there's a great video on YouTube with Brad Lee doing it, the real, the real Brad Lee, um, <laughs> who actually takes the phone off his salesperson, uh, which is a woman who's like needs to speak to her partner before she can make a decision, and he gets the five thousand dollars on the call. It takes forty five minutes to do it, but he just, yeah, it's 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 hardcore, and you don't need to have hardcore sales. No, I don't think so. I think if you've got a really good nurture pipeline where mm-hmm. someone can go back into and when that is the right time like in in that instance i'm not afraid to let someone go talk to their partner because again if you've got a really good offer and no you want them on the to call with the right people yeah because yeah. like you were saying earlier you want people that when they do come into your program they're going to implement because mm. what they if they don't implement and they stay for three months well you may maybe you made five grand but if they implement, they get great results and they stay with you for three years, what, 50, 100 grand, who knows? Like, yeah, you, way could, more. Yeah. you could be talking yourself out of money by getting a quick sale. Um, but in terms of that value video that people are seeing, that one, again, is going to depend on, like I, for some people that are first starting out, I actually say, don't start with this one get on a few sales calls, notice which objections you're getting first. That's the first one we're going to put in there. Yeah. Because we, we're going to try and pre-handle that one first. And then again, just taking note of what people are saying on calls. If they, if you keep getting people saying, I just don't think I can afford it, either try to pre-handle it. And if that doesn't work, maybe you're targeting the wrong people or your offer's not good enough. Yeah. Or and the other. Uh, the, the other side of that, and this is a little... Um, it's not a pet peeve, but it's something I'm, I'm, I'm focused on very much at the moment, is the understanding that a service sale, um, if done you know, right from the start and done correctly, you don't even have to have the, the, the product created until you understand the problem, problem right? Yeah. So you're working through connection, qualification, conversation, you're then going, are they pre, you know, is this the right time for this person? They're moving to yeah. a sales thing, making an offer at that point, right? And then there's a sale. Now, if you haven't done that a hundred times, how can you do the reverse, which is to come up with the perfect product that they'll always say yes to, be able to have a con- have them say, yes, this is the right time for me, have a conversation with them in their own head with the text that you're using, have them pre-qualify themselves before they actually step onto your website. And then finally, they choose to connect with you. There are so many people out there working on productized businesses because it allows them to have a business while they sleep. Uh, only to find out that they're not sleeping and tearing their hair out because why are no sales coming through? It's because you haven't had the conversations. Yeah. I think um, a lot of people look at like the value ladder in the wrong way. Like, oh, I'm going to create this book, this course, um, this thing that is, yeah, just going to make me passive income. Then I go to the high ticket thing, the done with you. And then I'll, then I'll start this, next thing after that and it's like well small low ticket thing is actually really hard to sell yeah if you haven't done the work first if you don't know that like like, a thousand people have the specific problem in the language that you're using uh i I hear so many people go what what do you what do you what do you what problem are you selling is you know what problem you solving is what i ask and they say communication and I'm like, well, communication sounds like a really good thing. Doesn't sound like a problem that you're solving. Oh, uh, 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 bad communication. All right, so you're telling me that you're telling people they've got bad communication. Well, that's not what they say. Well, what do they say? They go, mm. well, I don't feel heard. Um, uh, I'm not getting the respect I want. All right, well, then talk to that because that's actually talking the language of your customer. 100%. I am... Um... I just got off call with a client and I'm sure she won't mind me sharing this. We were looking at a bit of her content. She's helping people to like transition careers. Um, they're obviously hating their life. And she created this like 10 picture piece of content that had a lot of text and it was like 10 stats around like employment kind yep. of thing. I said, do your ideal clients look at stats around unemployment or 
are you appealing more to your peers of people that are in HR that talk about employment? And that's, I think that's a big trap that people fall into with their content. They appeal to their peers, not like you said, the language that their ideal clients are actually using. Like this just is the biggest game changer of like people that are commenting and saying, mate, your content looks so nice. Like it's so yeah. interesting. And it's, go trip. you're doing a really good, yeah. You think I'm killing it. My content's great. Yeah. But it's not until people start messaging them they haven't engaged with any of their content before or the other day, this is the first time it's ever happened. A guy just called me on messenger and wanted to chat straight after live. Like, yep. And we booked in a sales call right after that. And just, that, that feeling of like understood. Yeah. Like I feel understood. You're talking about my stuff, exactly how it's happening. Even articulating it a little bit better than them in a way as well it goes such a long way. And once you've done it, once you've done it a few times and uh, you, this means that, and that means this. So, you know, uh, you, you're married, you've got kids. Yeah, I do. Okay. And the problem is that you're, that you're having is that um, you, you, you're sort of on this roller coaster ride. You know, I imagine that's probably affecting things at home as well. Yeah, it is. Like, you know, one day everything's great. The next day, you know, it feels like everyone's cold. You know, it's just a reflection from that, but you don't even have to talk about that. You know, just would you like help with that? Absolutely, I would. And so um, uh, I will get you back again at some point and we'll talk about the content um, creation side of things because I know you do a lot of work in that space too. Uh, and it's very important. But even in my own program, I will not let people work on positioning until they understand their customer because they they will work on all these authority pieces they always go to the authority i need to be positioned like you said for their peers than actually for the clientele like is it they're telling people what to do as you're well telling like, people what right to do way. yeah they're, they're creating the theme for the the next year that's not based on anything that people are experiencing they're basically creating the product without actually asking the customer what they want defining so what the they forge, need how do you do that like how, but, how do you help people identify their client before um, they start to move on to position? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, number one, uh, we go who. Now, who has a whole big thing around it, but usually it's tied to their lifestyle. It's like, do you really want to work with this person? Do you really want to work with these type of people? Why do you want to work with these people? Because you literally could work with any group of people. I'd get you $300,000 with anyone. But if you want to build a three hundred thousand dollar business where they just you where you hate working with these people, there's no point in doing that. So we go all right, who? Which means we know where because if we if if we don't know where they are, our who's not detailed enough, right? So one leads into the next. I then get very clear on symptoms because symptoms rather than specific problems, um, and certainly not like the need. <laughs> need is it you know it's like i've got uh i don't go into the the doctor because i've got gout you know i go in because i've got a pain in the leg i haven't been diagnosed yet by the way i don't have gout and the 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 the, the stepping through that now they go all right well i don't know what the symptoms are right i don't know what the symptoms are well there's multiple ways you can work that out one of the ways is to build an asset called an interview series speaking to your ideal client right 10 times and get some real real evidence and at the same time have this really cool thing you can use the lead magnet later you can do the same thing with benchmark surveys on industries you can actually run discussion groups and all sorts of different things that actually get you in a position where you can accidentally fall over sales while you're doing research yeah yeah i, I love that i think that's i think the symptom thing is like something that's really underlooked too like the amount of calls I get on with like new coaches that have just come out of like a coaching school and they want to label themselves as a specific type of coach. Not talking about any coaching school in particular. No, no, not, not in particular. So, <laughs> you know, and they say I'm an empowerment coach or, you know, I'm a, I'm a business coach. There's a yeah. lot of different business coaches that can do, you know, a, a business coach that wants to appeal to someone like myself or a business coach that wants to appeal to a 45 year old mother with three kids. Yeah. We both want completely different outcomes. I might want to, I'm not saying this is what it is, but I might want hundred million dollar business 
heaps of ambition, heaps of fame, all of that. Mm -hmm. The mum might just want a business that runs really well so she has more time for her kids. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip that round so you don't get in trouble. The mum may want a $100 million business. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> the dad wants to actually spend more time with his kids. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to spend more time with my two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to spend more time with my three kids. I mean, that's the, that's the thing. And that's why I changed yeah. the business that I'm in. Because there was a time when I was that specialist service provider and I was running a marketing firm where we had 12 staff and we were breaking even. And I was working crazy hours, working with clients that I kind of liked, yeah, but doing work that I didn't love. And so that's, that's the big change. And so uh, what I love about what you do is that you work with purpose-driven businesses. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, like just from calling our business the digital difference makers and working with people that are coaches, consultants, and people that sell their expertise, we do naturally attract these people. And really it's people that through virtue of their work, they want to, they want to help people first and foremost, but some of the people that we attract as well. And, and we love working with these type of people is that I know that I'll be happy at $10,000, but $10,000 per month, but I want to make much more because I have, I want to give back. Mm -hmm. I have this cause that I want to be able to give to. I've got like this other thing that I want to launch. And the whole idea of our business is really to try and help people actually create the launch pad for that movement that they want to start, the impact that they actually want to have. Because there's a lot of people out there that have good intentions and a lot of people that don't actually have the ability to act on those intentions yeah so just giving stuff away for free and making it easy for people to opt in isn't the way to do that mm -hmm. in fact i've seen a lot of people burn out that way i've seen them be frustrated because people don't take them seriously yeah the way to do that and it shouldn't be looked on negatively is really to grow a big business <clears throat> Cause you can just impact so many more people that way. And, and really that that's the people that we really like to work with. Yeah. And for me, I mean, at the very least sustainable, right? So there's, and there's yeah. two S for that. You, 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 your business needs blood. The blood is cash flow, And um, that's number one. Uh, well, actually number two, number one is it needs uh, someone to drive it. And if you burn out in the process, that's not going to help anybody. Yeah. The, um, the other thing like, I'll, I'll get you to, Give me like, what are three steps that people who haven't got a system between the, the booking and the thing, what are three steps that they could just get started on? I'll give you to give me in a second. Yeah. But I've got a, a colleague of mine who um, uh, does webinars. Like he understands how important the step of someone paying for the value of the webinar prior to them joining the webinar is all about. And his, his approach now is to actually have them donate to a cause that he loves before they're able to join. So they don't sign up. They've actually got to go and donate, take the receipt and bring it to the application process. And, and it's only $50, but it's $50 towards a, a thing that he's actually trying to, uh, trying to help. And it makes it so that we don't just get randoms landing on this call. We've got people who actually want the content. I love that. I think I've, I've never heard of someone doing that. that yeah, he's I, actually got a fake steal team. that. Cool <laughs> I may that. just take that and start doing that. I really like that. Yeah. And so um, what, are, what are three steps that people who are, who are not doing this yet could, could start? So three easy steps. Yeah. So firstly, get Calendly and do, do set up work. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, they're, they pretty much, they give you the templates, the emails and texts already. So you pretty much just pay upgrade to workflows from the normal paid account. Then you set up, then you can go in and change the template just a little bit to add in, you know, click on this page and just check out this thing before our call. Mm -hmm. Obviously you need to set, set up the page. So that, that'd be step two. You got to set up the page, whether you're doing it on click funnels or drop whatever your landing page build. Yeah. I like is. lead pages. That's pretty affordable. Lead pages are really so affordable. Yes. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Um, but the next thing to do on that page, the most important one is really thank you for booking a call. 
like I want to give you more information about who I am, why why you should trust us, and how we do what we do. Like even if it's just a high level overview of how you work with people, and you don't get into the offer, yeah. that you should still start with that, regardless of where you are. And then if if that's all they see that is going to go a long way before someone gets on a call. Cause even just the fact that they watch a video before the call, it's a little bit more effort that goes a long way rather than them just booking the call and kind of, yeah, I'm just coming on to check things out. You know? I think that's good. Cool. So, yeah. So really, good. really, really helpful. The, um, uh, so if your process, so if, if, if you've got a service or if you've got a consultation process, whatever it is, uh, they make the booking, they, they, they get to learn more about you so that they actually show up uh, with a lot of that work being done. It means you're stepping into rapport rather than having to create it, number one. Yeah. And I'll give you, get you to do the same thing for e-commerce. So let's say that someone's just made a, a sale and there's like a two-week delivery process. How do we keep them warm through that? Yeah, so I think, again, I would try to this might happen more so through emails rather than like, Hey, go watch this video before you get your product. Yeah. Um, but each email similar to the soap opera sequence that Russell Brunson's talked about. Yeah. Talk about the brand, you know, talk about why, why you're, why you've got the business and why the product is helping for a specific purpose. Like talk about that. And each email should allude to what they're going to learn in the next email so it's already good from an e-commerce point of view to get people to check your emails because that's going to be the most cost effective and easiest way to retarget people if you want them to buy something else or rebuy the same thing now you just skipped over a really super important point there and i just want to yep. refer re like, re like touch on it so people if you're creating an email sequence, if there are going to be a number of emails that you do towards the end or the middle or wherever you want, like even at the top of the first email, I'm going to send you a, a few emails that are going to help you get the best out of the experience. All right. Number one, preluding to other emails. At the bottom of the email, in the next email, I'm going to be talking about A, B, and C. Yep. Now, if you make that attractive, they're hanging out for the next email. How often do you have people hang out for the next email? Like that's the whole purpose of the thing. And it's and that's why it's a soap opera sequence because you know, at the end of a soap opera, they leave you on a cliffhanger. Exactly. And I mean, from, from an e-commerce point of view, look at what's going to either add value, complement the product or entertain in a way as well. Like it, that you could, you've got so many different products. I can't say exactly what to do there, but you know, you know here's how to look after the products. And the next thing I'm going to show you, like this, you know, if it's a pillow, here's the exact way to wash the pillow. And the next thing I'm going to show you how to like, um, how to set up your bed so that you'll sleep better. Yeah, and get the best out of the pillow. The pillow. Yeah, exactly. they're, they're valuable. Exactly. And like, you know, here's, so there's more information, stuff that they actually want to see. And like, you could even... If you want to try and follow up, use that same thing to follow up and try and get like, get them to buy something else or upgrade or even downsell them to something else. Like there, there's all the different things you can do there. You might try and slip in like a discount code or like, you know, here's how to like get this extra thing. Or like, hey, if you take this extra action, like if you leave a review, we'll upgrade this thing. So you can start trying to lead people with benefits. Yeah. And this, I mean, there, there was a thing by John Taffer, you know, the guy who has Bar Rescue over oh, in America. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they've got, yeah, it's interesting that one. It's like a mafia thing. Yeah, yeah. So he, um, he went on a, I think it was a podcast with Gary V yeah. and he talked about like, people come back to a restaurant, like the thing that gets them really coming back. Like I think the percentage shot up to like 80, 90%. They had to come, they had to do four visits. So for the first three visits, the first one you knock off like, Hey, here's a discount. Next time you come in, 
it's 50% off the meal. Or like here's, here's a free dessert for the next time you come in with this. And then the next thing you give them a free drink. The next thing it's $5 off. Like wh- whatever it is, but you get them to like the fourth time. And I think that's the same with e-commerce. Like if you're selling something that is like either repeatable or you've got other products, get them used to buying with you. Like in that period where they've just bought, that's the best time to try and get them to buy again or give them something that they'll use at a later stage or give them something for free that they might get instantly while they're waiting the two weeks with the other product so that waiting doesn't seem as bad because they got something straight away. Yeah, and expecting. the same the same reflection outside of the e-commerce space is if someone's going to start on a program with you in like two weeks, what can you get them started on now? So they they feel like the actual process has started. Now, I could talk to you for ages is, is clear. <laughs> I think I'm going to join you on your podcast at some point too, but I will get you back about the... Uh, the content creation side. And there's a whole bunch of geekiness we didn't even get into, but that's, that's fine. We don't want to go too high level on this. Um, where can people find out more about you and what you're up to? Yep. So if you want to join my Facebook group, the content marketing group for high ticket coaches and course creators, um, well, I, I assume there'll be like a link in the show notes if you want yep. to be able to join that and you'll be able to find it on Facebook as well. That's a great place to just see I come in and do lives. I just talk about different things I'm seeing happen each week. Mm -hmm. It's also a great point to access workshops or other events that we're going to run. And we've got things in our guide section. It's basically a mini course as well. So that's a great place to start. Fantastic. Job Neil, everybody, Uh, go and check out that Facebook group. And uh, yeah, there is so much uh, opportunity, I think, in looking at your business from uh, its processes, its systems, the psychology of actually how someone chooses to make a sale. Uh, and so I'm sure you're going to get a lot of value out of Job's work. So have a look at that. And uh, if you are looking for support in putting some of these things in, whether it be through Job's business or whether it be through, you know, the Forge and my business program, which is all about just teaching you how to how to do those sales components and how to actually build a pipeline that brings ideal clients into your world so you get to actually have a lifestyle you live, um, then reach out to me. And uh, I've got all sorts of stuff for you, but you know that. Till next time, stay passionate and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now. Make sure to visit russellpearson.com for more podcast episodes, videos, and more. russellpearson.com